Continuation of Part 3.2 Critical Remarks Having ascertained that Cardinal Wojtyla holds the theory of universal salvation, we are also in a position to notice a change in the meaning in the traditional theological vocabulary used in his statements. The thesis of universal salvation supplies the key to the correct understanding of what is really meant. On letter C, the commentary of Cardinal Wojtyla on the conciliar text, the Cardinal in his commentary on the pastoral constitution, Gaudium et Spes, number 22, feels no need to go into an, quote, involved explanation of what he regards as a, quote, very clear council text, nor does he furnish the promised arguments to prove that Vatican II viewed the bridal relationship of Christ to every man as the focal point of that constitution. Instead, he suddenly pursues an entirely different objective. He is concerned about the concept of revelation in the council text which he believes must have an inner connection with the theme of the meditation, quote, Christ reveals man to man himself. Moreover, he proposes only to pick out special points in the council text, which appear, quote, new and inspiring. We will concentrate our interests on these new and inspiring points. Cardinal Wojtyla's interpretation of the Council text is developed in four steps, on which we briefly comment. The first point. No one will contradict the Cardinal's observation that the Vatican II position according to which, quote, man is a mystery which became revealed in Christ, end quote, runs counter to rationalism or empiricism. But, the Church has always held this position, and not just since the last council. Or, does the expression, quote, revealed, in inverted commas, mean something new after all? Something, quote, new and inspiring in the council text? Second point. The council text should, in the Cardinal's view, make clear the, quote, anthropological or even the anthropocentric character of revelation, end quote, in which he, quote, applies the concept of mystery to man, end quote. The words, quote, anthropological or even anthropocentric, end quote, do not appear in the council text. Cardinal Wojtyla speaks of an, quote, anthropological or anthropocentric character of revelation, end quote, as though it were a theological foregone conclusion. Joseph Ratzinger emphasizes, on the other hand, the Christocentric character of the same text. Footnote. In the commentary on Article 22, Volume 14, page 350, quote, one is indeed allowed to say that here, for the first time in a magisterial text, a new type for an entirely new Christocentric theology appears, which, in relation to Christ, ventures theology as anthropology, which thereby becomes for the first time radically theological, Christ as a man in the talk of God, disclosing the deepest unity of theology. End quote. The nature of this approach is outlined by Ratzinger in the following manner, quote, The humanity of all men is one. Since Christ took on one human nature, humanity is henceforth in each man Christocentrically defined. End quote. Page 350. These thoughts, however, have prevailed in Christocentric changes over to the anthropocentric through the thesis of universal salvation, as is the case with Cardinal Wojtyla. End footnote. Cardinal Wojtyla's reasons for the alleged anthropocentric character of revelation supposedly emphasized in the council text are by no means obvious. For, as is well known, 
Man is not the only subject which comes under the concept of mystery, but all truths of the Christian faith are rightly called mysteries. For instance, we speak of the mystery of the triune God, the Incarnation, original sin and redemption, the Church and the sacraments, justification and the last things. In that case, one must speak of a theocentric, Christocentric, hamartiocentric, soteriocentric, ecclesiocentric, dikaiocentric, or an eschatocentric character of revelation. Translator's footnote. The reader can figure out the meanings of these high-sounding words if he knows the Greek roots. Hamartia equals sin, soter equals savior, Ecclesia equals church, dikaios equals just, eskata equals last things, end footnote. The mystery of man evidently has an entirely exceptional significance in the theology of Cardinal Wojtyla. Furthermore, the Cardinal's argumentation is by no means self-evident. To apply the concept of mystery to man is one thing. To infer thereby the anthropocentric character of revelation is quite another. The explanation, quote, This revelation is centered on man. Christ reveals man to man himself, but he does so by revealing the Father and the Father's love. See John 17, 6, end quote, is a sweeping statement which in no way flows from the Council text, yet which plainly manifests the Cardinal's understanding of the expression, quote, anthropocentric character of revelation. The next step of his commentary gives the final explanation. The third point. The sentence, quote, Revelation is not a theory or ideology, end quote, presents no problems. Classical theology defines revelation, strictly speaking, as locutio dei ad homines, i.e., God's speaking to men. Hebrews 1.1 1, 1. The definition of Cardinal Wojtyla, revelation consists in a fact, the fact that by his incarnation the Son of God united himself with every man, became man himself, one of us, quote, like us in all things but sin, Hebrews 4.15, is no faithful rendition of the council text, which in fact qualifies the statement that the Son of God has united himself, quote, to a certain degree, with every man. The Council text can be understood without need of further comment in the sense of the Fathers who present the incarnation of the Son of God as a union or wedding with the whole human race. However, by that is meant only a virtual wedding to which the human race is invited by Christ. There is no question of the application of the fruits of the redemption or the communication of supernatural grace. The latter occurs only at the formal wedding of Christ with his bride, the Church, the communion of justified sinners. The Cardinal's definition cannot, however, be interpreted in the sense of the Fathers or of classical theology. We have pointed out that Cardinal Wojtyla understands the union of the Son of God with every man in the sense of universal salvation. Therefore, his definition, when compared with tradition, says something really new. It furnishes the key to an adequate understanding of his concept of revelation. See above, section 2.4. Since the New Testament, God revealing himself to man through the incarnation of his Son was theologically undisputed. Christ reveals God not only through his teaching and example, but he is, quote, in persona, the revelation of God per se, quote, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, 
end quote, John 1, 14. For that reason, one can speak of a Christocentric character of theocentric biblical revelation. Cardinal Wojtyla, however, says something else. His definition does not say, by revelation we mean that the Son of God became man, was born of the Virgin Mary, and revealed the glory of the only begotten Son of the Father, and thus the glory of God. The Cardinal's definition of revelation is different, namely, that the Son of God, through his incarnation, united himself with every man, si e unito ad ogni uomo and as man became one of us, e diventato como uomo uno di noi. The clash with the biblical Johannine definition is evident. In the Cardinal's concept of revelation, the inner fact of the hidden union of the Son of God with every man corresponds to the outer fact that the Son of God as man became one of us, and consequently as man, also presents our true human existence, or, quote, declares who we are. This shift of emphasis indicates in a subtle way the anthropocentric turning point. The union of the Son with every man through the Incarnation is the fundamental primary object in the concept of revelation as well as the key to an understanding of that anthropocentric character of revelation emphasized by the cardinal. <laughs>